time is it? You know what time it is? It's time to hit that subscribe button. You know where it's at? Right down there. And it's time to follow my Instagram, Geekly Amanda, G-E-E-K-O-Y Amanda. It's the same on Twitter. And it's time to get this movie review started. Y'all. Last night, I got to screen the new Wonder Woman 1984 movie. And let me just begin in by saying, this movie's going to save 2020. Oh, yes, it is. So the year is 1984, hence the title, Wonder Woman 1984. It's about 60 years later after we last saw Diana and Steve. Here we have Diana, you know, independent woman working uh, at the Smithsonian in D.C. by day. And by night in her downtime, what is she doing? Fighting crime. You know, getting the bad guys, stopping robberies. She has a little friend co-worker, Barbara, who's kind of like the opposite of her. She's kind of shy and not confident in herself. But she, I'm telling you, is enamored with Diana. She just loves her, wants to be like her. And, you know, the two start a little friendship. Well, so much so that Diana trusts her. When they get this little rock, they find this rock. They want to find the origin of this this whole stone. And it, come to find out, this rock is a little more than they thought it was. Really? This rock has some kind of super powers that it can grant wishes. But when it grants a wish, it takes something away. That's, that's the whole trick of it. Well, who comes around in Maxwell Lord, who is played by the P Pedro Pascal? And I guess he gets a little, you know, word of what this rock does and kind of goes in there and takes it. And then that's when things just go get out of control. If you're looking for action, this movie ain't going to disappoint. Just like the first movie, action packed. And let me tell you, this movie brings back everything that we love, especially from the first one. I'm talking about, like I said, the action, the scenes, the scenery, the sets. I mean, you can get a little taste of that when the opening scene and you saw that whole arena at the Amazon women. Well, this is with everything, like at the Smithsonian scenes, fight scenes. Beautiful. As you see the costume, she, look, my girl's right there. Bringing back her gold costume, amazing. This movie is a little different. It has like a lot of heart and humanity along with the superhero part. I mean, we have Diana, right? We have her and she has grown into her, her power. She's like what I said, by by day, downtime, by night, she's fighting power. She's fighting the bad guys, using her powers, got her little lasso going. But also there is like an incomplete part of her that you can just tell. Gal Gadot is such a great actress that, you know, she don't even have to say something and you can just feel and just by the look at her face, you know, if her heart is breaking, if she's angry. Like I said, it's 60 years later, 60 years since she last saw Steve, the love of her life, and she's never gotten over him. And this attachment she has to him is kind of like a conflict in her, which we have this powerful heroine, but also one that, you know, has loss and, you know, has attachment to the love of her life still and, and this void in her. So we really see the humane, the humanity side of her. Steve, Steve makes an appearance. I don't know. I don't want to give too much away. I don't want to give too much away of this, but he's, there's some scenes that he's in and, you know, this is a great representation because you got the two dynamic duo, right? Steve and Wonder Woman. But let me tell you what upstages them. It's kind of like their, their opposites, their yin yang is, you know, the, the Maxwell Lord. And then you got Barbara, who's the cheetah. Pedro Pascal plays our Max Lord, who is this megalomaniac businessman. And his performance is over the top you know, just outrage, outlandish and outrageous at sometimes. But that was like the total charm in it. Like he nailed it. And you were just like, this is great. I, I you know, we always think of Mandalorian. Let's see more, some more Pedro Pascal, you know, broaden his horizons with these characters and really showing the versatility in his acting. And then there's the Cheetah Girl who, like I said, has both of them have this humanity side and they give you a little backstory of why, you know, maybe they became a villainish type character. But her, like you find yourself cheering for. There's this one moment in the in the in the movie where it's kind of like a Me Too moment where she's kind of getting this sexual harassment, and she ain't playing. She ain't playing. You you better if you harass the cheetah, you better be ready for the claws. <laughs> if I had any complaints about this movie? It's that it's long. It is long, two and a half hours. Now I know this goes on lines with the first movie, kind of the same amount of time which I kind of complained about it too. I'm like, that's a little too long for a superhero movie. Now I know what you're gonna say. 
you know, what, what about the first one, two and a half hours? What about Avengers Endgame, which was three hours? Endgame was kind of like wrapping up the whole, you know, series of them. I mean, so you had a lot to get in. And the first Wonder Woman movie, two and a half hours long, but that one, it was also like a backstory, an origin story. So it had a lot to get in. This one is more just like its own superhero movie with new villains. And I don't think it could have been that long. It does risk like losing the tension of like, especially younger audiences, younger children who may be interested in this. You give them a two and a half hour movie, they they might, you might lose them. I'm just saying. The most striking aspect of this whole uh, Wonder Woman 1984 is the message. Oh, I'm telling you, it just, it made you, it was just a feel good heartfelt like it is the optimism the optim the you know the the hope for we have like for humanity and mankind and just the good in people it really spreads that message the year that we've had the year of 2020 this is exactly the kind of message we need you know that we're there for each other that we care about each other sends the message of the good in people and really gives you just an uplifting feel. And this is the kind of feel, this is the kind of movie we need, especially in, in the holidays, especially the year 2020. I feel like this is, Wonder Woman 1984 is the best Christmas gift that I could get. And then, I ain't gonna spoil nothing, but let me just tell you, stick around for that mid credit scene because that was me. Jaw dropping, y'all. I was like, what? <laughs> I probably screamed. Wonder Woman 1984. If you haven't noticed, I loved it. I loved everything about it. I did. Even though the little longness to it and everything. The only thing I'm a little disappointed is, is I'm not being able to see it in theaters, which I couldn't. You know, I'm not going to theaters here with everything. Because just the visuals and the camera shots along with the music and the colors. I mean, you see the colors in it. That would have been beautiful on the big screen. And perhaps one day we will. Perhaps I will be able to see it on the big screen again one day. And if I had the chance, I'm jumping at it, even if I've seen this movie 10 hundred times before. It needs to be seen on the big screen at some point. But until now, I'm appreciative that I can see it. Christmas, HBO Max, that's what I'll be watching. Because I'm just ready to talk about it. <laughs> Let me know, comments, thumbs, all that. Till next time, bye.